Okay, I'll pray and then we can get going. Awesome. Cool. Um, sorry, we just said that though. Sorry, I'm reading <laughs> not this message instead of praying. Closing my no, I'm closing my eyes. <laughs> Lord, thank you for for what an amazing week this has been, um, mm. and that we've been able to come and and really marvel and look at um, the things that Jesus did and things he said and who he said it to. Um, Lord, thank you that we can look at the story and the the things that happened in history and um, and see how yeah how we fit into the bigger picture. Um, Thank you that we do fit into you, into your picture and that you chose us to be part of your story. We love that. Um, we love everything, every characteristic about you. We, we are so encouraged by it. Um, and yeah, I pray that this morning will be a blessing to, to us and everybody who stumbles upon it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can just imagine how, how happy it makes you just looking at your children, discovering a bit more about you. I'm yeah. sure you are very stoked um yeah give us strength for today um and keep our minds focused on what the with what they should be um let us not lose sight of of the main thing mm. in jesus name amen, amen. Cool. okay so this whole week has been amazing and we've looked at all these incredible things that jesus did like starting out with mm. um the healing of the lame man and what are the other stuff? Um, the transfiguration, this incredible, like Jesus revealing his glorified self, Jesus speaking yeah. to a storm and comment, like these amazing things. And today to top it off, I want to talk about what I think is the marvel of marvels. So an yeah. action that Jesus did that kind of flips our perception of, um, yeah. of how we view this world like right onto its head. Mm. And it might not be, yeah. an, it definitely wasn't an answer the disciples were thinking of receiving. Yeah. Um, so, so the context, we're looking at Matthew 18. Um, mm. the, the context is Matthew has just up to that point uh, declared Jesus is the Messiah. Like look at it through the line of David. Jesus, Jesus is the Messiah. Um, the teachings of Moses, Jesus is the Messiah. He even declared Jesus to be Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, and he had also shown all these miracles that Jesus, feeding the 5,000, um, you know, d casting out demons. Um, yeah. All, all, all these things, that the transfiguration. And then from like 14 onwards, Jesus just gives all these teachings. And this one particular teaching, mm. I think kind of sums up um, I think all of his, his teachings and what it looks like to be the Messiah in, in just this one yeah. simple teaching. So after witnessing all these things, the disciples had this question on their heart, who is the greatest in this kingdom? Mm. Like what does the greatest uh, uh, look like? Although actually reading a commentary, it said they should have actually had that question on their heart. What does the greatest look like? So they'll know how to act, but actually they wanted to be named by like, they wanted the name of who actually, is a great but anyway so they come up so this is where we pick up they come to jesus and they ask him who is the greatest okay. so we're looking at um uh matthew 18 verse 1 to 5. at that time the disciples came to jesus saying who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and calling to him a child he put it, he put him in the midst of them and said truly truly i say to you unless you turn and become like children you will never enter the kingdom of heaven Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes um, these little ones to sin, it would be better for them to have a great millstone fastened around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Um, so, yeah, there's all the, these prophecies of um, the Messiah coming in, in Psalms and in Daniel and how people, the Pharisees and uh, even Peter interpreted it as this great victorious military leader that's going to like crush yeah. their oppressors, yeah. you know, crush the yeah. Romans and elevate yeah. the Israel nation um, to higher their, than everyone else. Uh, mm. But Jesus flips that all onto, the, onto his head and he presents himself yeah. as the suffering servant. Like we read a yeah. couple of uh, 
a couple of weeks ago about Isaiah 53, like, you know, the, the, the yeah. suffering, he, he's, got to, he's got to die and kind of flips his whole idea on, onto its head, like who is the greatest yeah. and who is the the, the, And that's kind of why I marvel at it because our culture tells us, you know, like, you know, we've got to be, be the best and the, the most mm. of everything. I mean, you even yeah. see it in ministry, like have the biggest ministries and the, the yes. flashiest lights and the, the coolest yes. buildings and whatever. But Jesus talks about um, like we gain honor by serving others and, mm. um, and we replace revenge with forgiveness uh, mm. and yeah. we, we gain wealth by giving it away. So he flips the whole yeah. thing into its head. Yeah. People call it the upside down kingdom. Like it just, mm. uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense to our culture and definitely not in, in the culture or in the disciples day. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's definitely a thing. I mean, the Bible also describes like children being a gift from God. Like mm. these, these little children, like, you know, we consider they're not physically strong or they, they don't have the intellect. So we don't, think of them as highly as a great mm -hmm. powerful leader but this is the image that jesus has given us to say you know be like yeah. this to enter yeah. the kingdom i mean there's That's a there's amazing. innocence and, and a purity about children yeah. um, which mm. jesus desires for us to have mm. uh, so uh, yeah and and yeah he talks so much about like the, the suffering that he has got to go through so i kind of think in that the question the disciples should have asked um, is not who is the greatest, but like, how can we, I wrote it down here, how can we have the strength and the grace to endure this suffering mm. with you? Like, mm. like we know this is, we've got to live this life of humility and instead mm. of how can we escape, escape these things, like yeah. es escape the suffering and, and all of that, but rather how can we endure it with you and mm. um, yeah. find Joy and uh, and peace and all of that, um, mm. in in that, and yeah, yeah, I, I kind of find that as like that really is is mind blowing. It, you know, we always um, also got a phrase in my head. Uh, he didn't come to destroy those that will bring death to us, but rather he came to destroy death itself. And I think that's I mean, where yeah. he, he was victorious over death. Mm. Um, yeah. So it's like we don't do these things just to be we, uh, weak, fragile vessels because we mm. actually know we're doing it for God who is like all powerful and he is mm. victorious and yeah. he has won it all already. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And kind of also I felt like taking that thought even further down, uh, mm. like, Essentially, if we all are children of God, like we're not meant to be fighting amongst ourselves. Like our, you know, our battle's not against flesh and blood, but against powers and yeah. principalities of darkness. So, mm. so uh, yeah, so that's why He came with this message of humility and serving mm. others and bringing peace. And, yeah. yeah. Can so, I just read um, yes. a little note that at the foot, a footnote it says the way into the kingdom of heaven is by the simple trust and dependence of a child and the way to greatness in the kingdom is by the humility of a child expressed in a humble service i love the word dependence like children are dependent on their parents yeah and so are we dependent on god and it's it's when we think that we're independent of him yeah. that everything turns to to rubbish um yeah, yeah. so that i just it's a, yeah, I like that note. Yeah. But I just added in there. <laughs> no, totally. I'm, I'm trying to think of that scenario when the disciples are there. They, they've witnessed Jesus doing all these amazing things. And they, even like Peter had seen Jesus revealed in his glorified self. And then they asked him, who's the greatest? And like their expectations are so high for, you know, like Jesus, like ripping out his muscles and like big weapon yeah. or whatever. I am the greatest, but then you just put a child in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> it just must have they been. must have been like, okay. What? Interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is, there, is there any note of what they reply? No. 
No, it go it, it gives us a series of his teachings yeah. after them. Um, uh, no, there, not even in the other gospels. It also it's just amongst a series of teachings. But okay. I can I can imagine, I, you know, in the context of why they're asking that question, I, I can imagine they weren't mm -hmm. expecting that answer. No, no. Um, cool. Is there anything? I just want to read this. Yeah. Karen talking. If you have stuff to say, I, I am listening to you. Um. Yeah, that was that. That was kind of my my notes on cool. on no. that. Um, what did what what does your translation say? Similar to yours, I've in the New King James. Let me read the message just to see if there's any difference. At about the same time, the disciples came to Jesus asking, who gets the highest rank in God's kingdom? For an answer, Jesus called over a child whom he stood in the middle of the room and said, I'm telling you once and for all, that unless you return to square one and start over like children, you're not even going to get a look at the kingdom, let alone get in it. Whoever becomes simple and elemental again, like this child, will rank high in God's kingdom. What's more, when you receive the child on my account, it's the same as receiving me. Yeah. I like the like returning to just square one again, um, yeah. which is yeah, cool. Yay! Can't believe it's the end of a week. These weeks are going, and we ate, what was it? The, is this next week the last lockdown week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. until mm. until Thursday. Although I mean, we'll make... still uh, we'll still be in lockdown unless we like. No, I know, people. but officially, but officially, yeah, official work. I don't know. I wonder what they'll call it. Um, okay, we can ramble another time. Do you would yes. you like to pray for yes. us, please? Sure. Yeah, Father, thank you that yeah you bring this kingdom in, in, into this world, God, and yeah, it's beyond our understanding what this kingdom looks like. And we just ask you, Jesus, that you give us the strength and the grace to be able to endure um, what what we must go through jesus and we want to do it with joy and with peace and and with you jesus um we know that it's you're not calling us to just suffer for suffering's sake jesus but to yeah. bring you glory and and um and we know you're you're on our side and you are uh ultimately victorious jesus so we ask lord that you can make us like children we ask jesus that you um, can give us that heart, that innocent heart, that, that pure heart, God, and that uh, any um, uh, selfish ambition or, or want that we have, Jesus, that, that we can put that aside and, and just focus on you, Jesus. Again, let us just marvel at all that you have done um, and just be, be transformed by just looking upon you. Uh, so... Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that beautiful image that you that you showed us, and, and yeah, again, give us the strength and the grace to be able to to live this life out, and yeah, that that, that just shines and radiates um, your goodness and your love to the world. In Jesus' yeah. name, Amen. Amen. Thanks, Joe. Cool. Thanks, Good, good game. Yeah, See yeah. You soon. Enjoy See ya. your weekend. See you. <laughs> Online Bye. church tomorrow. Yay! Sunday tomorrow, people. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Victory Church. Cape Town. See you there. Bye. Bye. <laughs>